We are honored to showcase an educator with over 30 years of experience designing equitable outcomes and an asset-based approach to students. She continues to drive our force in education. She is Daniel Almarez representing the United States of America. Her session title is How to Promote Empathy Using the Mat. Hello, Daniel, how are you? Hi, Anisha. It's so happy to be here. Thank you for having me. The stage is yours. So I want to start with a, a little story. I, I've taught math for quite a long time, and a lesson I learned in one of my very first classrooms was a kindergarten class where I had the children sorting fruits and vegetables. That was their task. I was walking around looking to see how the kids were doing, and a little girl named Zenda was sitting there with a permigrant smile across her face, so proud of the way she had sorted the fruits and vegetables. But I noticed that they were mixed. Fruits were mixed over here with vegetables. And so I sat down next to her and I was about to explain to her that hers wasn't correct. She didn't have the vegetables sorted from the fruits. And when, before I could begin to explain to her, she said to me, when we go to the market, I'm in charge of the fruits and vegetables. These are the fruits and vegetables that go in the refrigerator. And these are the fruits and vegetables that stay on the counter. And what that lesson taught me was I was not going to impose my thinking on children until I really got to hear their logic and reasoning behind their thinking. And so this session today, what I want to do is really help you see that we really need to let the kids do the intellectual dancing. A lot of times we impose our thinking and explain to them how we would solve it. And what that does is take away from them their, their moments of thinking. So I want to ask you at this moment to really think about math students in general. And if you couldn't join me in the chat and give me just a few characteristics of what do you want math students to be able to do? Because that really helps you pinpoint what kind of activities you want to do with kids. I want them to be curious. I want to be sure that they can communicate their reasoning. So I'm going to give you a few seconds because this will be an interactive session to give me in the chat what would be your profile of a math student. Oh, discover answers for themselves. Wonderful. Finding their own classifications. Solve problems. Thank you so much, Alexander, Bina, Sanchita, Lauren. Thank you, Don. Solve based on their knowledge. And it really gives us some insight into their thinking. We can't see inside their head unless they're giving us something in writing. But the easiest way to really see what children are thinking is to listen to them to really sit down and listen to their logic and their thinking, because most of the time, from where they're sitting in their logic, they're correct. So I also want you to engage and feel what it feels like to be a learner. And so here's a simple problem. What number doesn't belong and why? So in the chat, Give me your answer, but don't hit return just yet. Which number do you think doesn't belong and why? These are great ways to get kids talking about numbers and patterns and things they see in a very low effective filter and communicating their reasoning. So when it comes time for them to do um, big projects or things that are gonna change the world, they really have learned how to share ideas, listen to the ideas of others um, and really understand someone else's logical thinking. So if you think nine was the number that didn't belong, hit return for me and tell me why. Why did you think nine was the number that didn't belong? Oh, being a great one. All the other numbers add up to seven. Did anyone else choose nine? Hit return if you chose nine. 
Ah, uh, single digit, only a ones digit. Nisa, you chose. It's the single digit, right? It's only a ones place. It doesn't have a tens place. Okay, now hit return if you thought 16 was the number that didn't belong in Y. Oh, Neelam, good one. So all the others are perfect squares. Three times three, four times four, five times five, 43 is the only number that's not a square. 16 is an even number. So you see how a simple activity like this where kids actually get to see what does everyone think. So in a classroom setting, I normally give them the numbers. I have all the kids stand up and then I ask them, which one do you think doesn't belong and why? I have one student share. And if the other kids think that same number doesn't belong, they also sit down, but give their explanation of why they thought it didn't belong. Nine, because it's the only on the least counting, it's the smallest number. 43 can't divide, it's a prime number. It can't be divided by anything but itself. Good one. But you can see how a simple warm-up activity like this to start the day would really get kids thinking and getting them really listening to other ideas of what do other students think. You're going to need a post-it note or a little piece of paper for the next one and be ready to go into breakout rooms and share. So here's the problem. A teacher gives six students some cards to play a game. She has 52 cards total. The teacher gives each student one card until all 52 cards are gone. How many students get exactly nine cards? And I gave you some sentence starters at the bottom. I'm gonna give you three minutes to work on this problem. And then Anusha is going to send you into breakout rooms. You have two minutes to convince your team members that your answer is correct. And everyone needs to get a turn to speak. Um, if you can turn on your cameras, if you're in a place you can have your cameras on, it's always nice to interact with your friends in the breakout room with your cameras on. But if not, then no worries and then share if you can. While you're finishing up the problem, this is one important point as well. You want to be sure you can give kids think time. You don't want to ask them to turn and share with a partner until they really had some time to think on their own so that we can get them doing what we call the intellectual lifting. 30 more seconds. Okay, Anusha, I think we're ready to send them in the breakout rooms. Two minutes per person. Convince your partners that your answer is correct using we'll the prompts do. and frames. Uh, we'll do. If anyone's having trouble getting into a breakout room, please let us know.
If anyone's having trouble getting into the breakout room, just let us know in the chat and we'd be happy to help. Hello. Uh, can I be put in room number eight? I'm unable to reach there. I need to go to room number eight. Uh, I'm not able to reach there. Hi, Anusha, I think we can bring them back now. Thank you, Daniel. Okay, thank you so much for sharing. Um, so Tal, do you wanna kind of start us off and tell us what, what did you and your partner decide the answer was? Oh, uh, the lovely Otima from, uh, from India. Uh, she just suggested and I agree that um, just divided by nine would be the easiest way. And then you get five and somebody is not lucky to get all the, 
all the nice cars. Okay, so let's give him some snaps. He, he thinks the answer is five. Does anyone agree or disagree? Totally agree. <laughs> Any more thumbs up? Either give me a reaction emoji or a thumbs up if you have your camera on. Anyone disagree? I wish to thank you because we had a lovely conversation and think this is uh, actually it's all about meeting each other here in this great convention. I'm so and glad. All thanks, yes. And all thanks to Anusha and uh, Devin who gave us this platform to interact and be together and share and exchange ideas and learn from each other. Thank you, Atima. You're welcome, Anusha. So did anyone disagree? Did anyone come up with an answer other than five? No. Um, I took a long time to come to, um, I was like just overwhelmed and I just couldn't come to a, you know, couldn't like quickly come up with an answer. And I was doing it differently. And the person that was talking to me uh, we, I didn't see him, uh, and he had a, a pretty quick way to do it. And I was like, wow, okay. So that shows how differently we process, we think. And so important because we talked in the last session about kids needing confidence. A lot of times we ask them to answer and they're unsure of themselves. So imagine you give them some time to talk and process. You build a little more confidence. As Nisa said, if she didn't have an answer and she had a partner, then at least in, when it comes time, she has someone, she has an answer she can give. I totally agree. We have peer learning in our school. Uh, so that uh, we can facilitate to those who are shy and do not uh, have confidence, enough confidence to speak in front of the class because they feel somebody can laugh. So we have a system of peer learning. I think that was one of peer learning and knowing each other as well. It helped in two ways. One is building confidence, giving an assurance that what I am doing, I have somebody with me when we are talking, discussing and coming to a conclusion and deciding. And then we must encourage, yes, now I can face the audience, now I can face the class, and now I can speak to the teacher. I think that's all what I can say as an educator here. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. And a lot of times we rush through curriculum and we don't take the time to let kids have some time to process, discuss with each other so that they can hear the thinking of someone else and, and that there are other solutions or other ways to solve the problem as Nisa explained, right? That someone explained it differently. Instead, we show a problem like that and then the teacher solves it. In that condition, only the kids are only seeing what the teacher thinks. We want them to see numerous people. An easy rule of thumb is always give them think time alone and then pair. If the task is complicated, you let them pair one more time. So the more complicated the task, the more times you let them pair so that they hear it. Imagine your um, English is not your first language. You need a moment to process, right? With someone else to hear it more than once rather than hearing it one time. So what I'd like you to give me now is in the chat, most valuable point for you. What has been something that resonated with you during this um, session, a most valuable point? Anything that resonated, resonated with you and then we'll move to question and answer. Oh, Lauren, that's a great, a great way to explain it. So it could have been five or four, depending on how you passed out the cards, which is absolutely correct. Either five or four could have been the answer, depending on how you handed the cards out. MVP, to be able to express the same solution in different ways and in different words. Consideration for others' views and opinions, learning from each other more than one way to look at an answer and listen. 
That's an important quality. We often wait for our turn to speak instead of really listening to how someone explains a problem. How children would feel if they're given a short time. And even though you had time, thank you, Nisa, for being vulnerable. You were exactly right. You're still nervous, but it normally takes a little bit of your nervousness away that you got to share with someone else. Accept other person as he or she is explaining. Open-minded. Good one, Teresa. Thank you for that. Confidence. Respecting others. So with that, um, any questions? I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you so much for participating. Um, I really enjoyed um, Thank providing you. this session. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you for your informative session. It was amazing to see math discussions that emphasize the thought processes and not just the answer helps, you know, help students become better listener, listeners and understand different approaches to a problem. And uh, yes, I do have a question for you. Most students are said to have been suffering from mathematics and anxiety, leading to frustration in learning it. So how can one get rid of this problem? Can mathematics learning you know, to be fun? Can it be fun? Mm -hmm. So I think doing um, strategies like we just did get, builds their confidence. And you also have to set up a safe environment for the kids that as the, as the adult in the room and as you teach the other kids to just be good listeners, for you to promote the thinking of kids, um, to really hear what they're thinking. I told you the story of Zenda and the fact that, you know, I misunderstood what she was doing, but she was very clear. So I think just really setting up a place where students can express themselves um, and we really do a good job at teaching each other um, how to be good listeners and, and really hear the thought process behind why someone is thinking that. Okay, maybe. So the answer be to be a good listener, start from the basics and help the guiding them throughout the process. I do have another question for you as well. Since learners may have differences in grasping mathematical problems, uh, very often all learners are put into the same basket. How would you suggest resolving this issue? Mm -hmm. So when you vary the problems and you have them, you know, partner with each other, um, just giving them a number of different experiences, modeling, um, having them try other problems, just exposing them to giving them time to think and discuss will, will help tremendously. Just like if you have a multi-age classroom, right, that you'll have some that can explain these problems and then maybe the next day it's the problem I understand. But really getting them to value their own opinions um, and be confident about their answers. Thank you. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you. And I, we have Nisi Pro who wants to ask a question directly. Hi, Nisi. How are you? Yeah. Okay. Uh, hi. So I actually noticed that between me and the other friend uh, who we were talking in the breakout room, that I was actually visualizing and like imagining the teacher actually giving one, you know, one by one. So it is actually a long process to come to a conclusion. I still haven't finished, to be honest. After this, I'm going to work that out. I'm so curious. So, so when I'm doing that, you know, so like the first time she gave six cards and so on, right? So that's my way of doing it. And then the other friend, I don't know how he did it, but he was like, okay, five, the answer is five. And he explained it in a different way. So would there be like a, a, a name for it, the way we think, the process? Mm -hmm. uh, a particular, yeah. Some, what you're describing is, um, so sometimes people will model it. So imagine I've done this problem with lots of adults and they'll put six little circles and they'll actually just pass out one card at a time. So they'll create a model. Some will use multiplication facts like um, six times eight is 48, which means eight, six kids will have eight cards and you only yeah. have four cards left and your last hand out the last four, which means four children will get nine cards. Right. And so the beauty of it is listening to each other describe it 
And it's always fascinating because in math, we often think there's one right answer. Yeah, There might be one number that, but to hear the logic behind how children get there is where the beauty is. Yeah. Okay. Got you. Thank you so much, Nissi. Does anybody else have any questions for Danielle? Lauren says, thank you so much. I'm so passionate about this kind of maths learning to help alleviate maths anxiety. I'm so with Lauren. <laughs> thank you so much, Lauren, for sharing your thoughts. Thank you so much, everybody. If you have any questions for Danielle, please, please, please connect with us to educationinfluence.com and Danielle will connect with you as well. You can direct message her, you can connect to her, you can collaborate with her, we can do we can do lots of things through Education Influence. If you do have any questions, please do visit educationinfluence.com. So we do have another session in exactly 30 minutes. And um, if you have any questions, please unmute yourself and just the stage is yours. If not, I would like to have a 30 minutes break and we can continue the session there. Just 30 minutes. Uh, can I, can I uh, ask something how you people do it? Because see, uh, in math, understanding the concept is so important. Developing mathematical thinking is so important. And for that, we need to give children time. That sometimes by modeling, as you said, if the child actually is given 52 cards and distribute it out or use some um, mathematical facts of addition or multiplication or division or whatever. Now, that takes away a lot of time. And then there is the concept of so much syllabus, so much content to cover. So then how do you deal with that balance? Yeah, because mm-hmm. see, I am from India here. There is a lot of press right now on uh, the content. Now with the new educational policy coming in, we are changing, we are going towards a big change, making it concept-based learning, but still that mindset of completing mm-hmm. the syllabus. So how do you deal with that? Oh, great, great question. So. Normally, I just start each day with a problem like this, where they get 10 minutes of just thinking about problems, because the way I, the analogy I would use is sometimes when we teach the content one concept at a time, it's like teaching children how to drive. You don't teach them to drive one, today we're going to do gas pedal, today we're going to do blinker. You have to at some point let them drive, which is giving them a real world problem. And then you do a mini lesson after of wherever they, they might be stuck. But you also have to do the content. But you have to have a balance. You have to do both. Give them real world problems to try and discuss. Um, Sometimes if a problem like this one, I might do it two days for 10 minutes each day. We started it today. My friend Nisi is going to go home and she's going to try it because she's so intrigued. And so we could actually start tomorrow to say, how many of you solved it this way? Let's create a model or a poster. If you solved it this way, let's create a model or a poster. And so you break that same question up in two days of 10 minutes of doing the kids doing the intellectual dancing and then you also then still have time to teach the direct instruction or some of the content good question Okay, my friends, thank you so much. And please reach out. I'm happy to help any way I can with resources, ideas. Um, Thank you all for coming. Um, It was very enjoyable. Thank you so much, Danielle. Thank you so much.